Welcome back, Local Liberty viewers. Today we're doing another community chat segment. This time I'm joined by Larry Rector, and he's going to talk about anarcho-socialism. Now, sometimes in the past we've talked about anarcho-capitalism. You know, we have a libertarian uh, point of view on the show. We're promoting freedom. Uh, Larry came up to me. He's like, hey, I want to talk about anarcho-socialism. I went, wait, 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 anarcho-socialism? So, Larry, why don't you tell the audience, what is anarcho-socialism? Okay, well, to get an understanding of anarcho-socialism, first you have to have an understanding of what is anarchy. And I think a lot of people get the wrong idea when it comes to anarchy. Um, when you think of anarchy, you tend to think of discord, disharmony, um, a society in chaos, and that's not at all what we're talking about as actual anarchists. Anarchy actually has two different definitions, and most people are kind of hung up on the first. The first definition is anarchy is a state of disorder due to an absence or non-recognition of authority. Second definition is absence of government and uh, absolute freedom for the individual as a political ideal. Um, we don't actually believe in complete disorder and disharmony. Uh, we see an anarchist society as one that is well ordered. That's why if you look at the anarchist symbol, it has that circle around it. The A within the circle. That circle stands for order and harmony. We believe that an anarchist society would be more harmonious. Which is, which is, it is contrary to common thinking, because usually when people think of anarchy, they think of chaos. They think of, oh, people running on the streets, people running around the shades, hacking each other, stealing randomly, it's going crazy. But that's not, that's not what we're talking when we're talking about anarchy. And this confuses a lot of people um, when using uh, more esoteric definitions or, or more technical definitions. The same way where you might use a definition uh, in, a, for, in a scientific meeting in one way and a common definition in another way. So you just get past the, the anarchy thing. Forget what you knew about anarchy. Just listen to Larry about the idea. The ideas are what matter here. It's not so much the definitions. The ideas behind the definition. If you don't like that word, forget about it. Talk about yeah. what, what, what's your meaning here behind well, this. Political uh, definitions aren't exactly the, the model of efficiency as exactly. far as understanding the ideas mm -hmm. behind it. Um, basically, if you, if you picture your politics in terms of a grid more than a one-dimensional line, I know we have a tendency to think right-wing, left-wing, uh, conservative, liberal. Moderate, um, if you're in the middle. Moderate, if you're in the middle. Um, imagine for a minute that you had one line going from left to right, and that that was going to represent uh, your belief on, in economics, uh, a free economy versus a more controlled economy. And another line going up and down, and that was your belief in authoritarianism versus uh, libertarianism. Well, we'll, we'll throw this on the screen for you so all you can right, see it. All right, all right. How, how much control, how much say should the state have in your life? Um, up towards like the high end of things, you have people like the fascists and the communists. Uh, they, that's the state has way more power in your life. Down towards the bottom end, you have your libertarians and your anarchists, but how do you differentiate what a social anarchist is um, versus maybe uh, what a libertarian is? So the major difference is that we believe in a more controlled economy uh, versus a, uh, the free market economy. We're actually uh, opposed to capitalism, which would be our major difference between... Uh, the <laughs> That's a major difference there, Larry. Major difference. It's yep. a major difference. Yep. And, and theoretically, we would actually like to do away with the state altogether. Um, now this this, this is where I find it interesting. You want to get rid of the state, mm -hmm. but you don't want to have capitalism. So, but how is this being? How are people not acting capitalistically just naturally? Well, that's a good question. Um, as far as going into the future and what economics would look like in an anarchist society, we couldn't really tell you. <laughs> There's a lot of theories behind this, uh, but the truth is, we're all going to go into the future together regardless if you're a Democrat, a Republican, an anarchist, and what this form of economy would take, nobody really knows. But we do have some pretty good ideas about what we would like to implement in it. And one of the major principles we'd like to, to implement is that all labor should get an equal exchange. Another is that everybody should have equal means to the uh, means of production, equal access to the means of production. Now, what do you mean uh, all labor should be uh, equal exchange? Is that what you said? All labor should be equal exchange. You should, get, you should get paid an exact amount for what you did. In other words, if you have a group of people working at a factory, you have all different roles at a factory. You have the laborers, you have the bosses, you have the people working in the office. Middle management. Middle management. So in, in, in this form of economy, everybody would be equal owner and take an equal share of what that factory produces. Interesting. So you're going to share ownership among the factory. This, is, this actually mm -hmm. is done in some, uh, in, there's some other countries and there are some... Um, businesses that operate in this manner. Everyone is a shareholder and they make decisions uh, based on what the shareholders want. I read, I read about uh, 
this company, I'm, I forget what they, they, they manufactured, but there, there's a small company, 150 people, they all owned it, and then whatever they were manufacturing, something happened in the economy where there was going to be a hit. And they're like, uh-oh, so our, their business is going to be a downturn. And they decided as a whole, you know what? We don't care about the profits. We're, we're going we're to dramatically cut our profits. It's going to be very small profits because we want everyone to keep making the same pay. Whereas maybe um, a centrally run company would have said, well, if we lay off 10 people and we restructure this here and we cut, cut hours here, we'll still make the same amount of profit. The here they decided that profit wasn't so important. What mattered were the individuals in the company's well-being. So is this a, is this what you're you're, you're envisioning? It, it is. It, it, it's it's what I'm envisioning. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people think because there's no rulers, there won't be any rules, and that's just not the case. In an anarchist society, we actually do believe in representation. We do have federalism. We have cons uh, um, concepts of that. The only difference is it would be truly democratic, with every person having an equal say. That's why we can't really tell you what an anarchist uh, um, Society constitution would look, like. would look like, because it would be determined completely by the will of the people. But there's, but even in this setting, uh, there still be leadership roles, because like if you're if you're in a, in a group doing things, there still has to be someone that usually takes the lead for for whatever reason, just for management reasons, just because it's more efficient. But everyone will have a will have a say, saying, you know what, that's not the right way to do it. Exactly. Well, exactly. Not only that, but everyone would have to agree to contract. Um, nobody would be forced into that particular group and to have that particular representative. Representative. You would you would all mutually agree to be a part of that group. You would all mutually elect the representative, and the representative would have to listen to the will of the people to make his decisions. Instead of our current system, in which it seems like when a person gets elected. Thanks for the election. Uh, now I know better than you what I'm going to do. So I know what's better for you. Uh, how though would you get people to go along with this? Because if you're not using force to force people into these these kind of arrangements, why it, why would people naturally go this in this direction? Or do you think they would? Okay. Well, we, absolutely. I, I I actually see anarchy as inevitable. I see the collapse of of the current uh, structure we have for society as inevitable. People have a tendency to, to push back against oppression, and we we've been seeing that in minor forms throughout the years. I mean, it it, it kind of builds. Uh, we we see it with the riots against police violence. We've seen it with, um, for instance, the ninety nine percenters, the um, Occupy Wall Street movement, groups like Anonymous. Uh, people don't like oppression. They have a tendency to push back, and. <clears throat> What, what we believe, basically, uh, a pacifist anarchists, ones that don't, we're not going to take to the streets violently, that's another misconception about uh, anarchy, uh, we believe that it'll come about naturally as a result of a class conflict between the many who labor and the few who rule. And if people are aware of the, of the discrepancy that's going on in the United States today. When you have 1% of the population that has seems to be 90% of all new income, it, we know that's not right. Uh, when you see the people who labor hard in the factories taking home way less than the people who are working in a nice, comfortable office, we know that's not right. Um, I think we, we intuitively have an understanding of, of what we want for a society, and oppression is definitely something we don't want. I think I see that in human nature throughout history. So as an anarchist, I see my role less to get involved in overturning the government, I don't see that as, as, as completely necessary for me to do, and, but rather as a thought leader so that when the collapse inevitably happens, we've already been having this conversation, and we kind of know what direction we want to go in. I'm slightly, I'm slightly confused with the, the distinction between anarcho-capitalism and anarcho-socialism here, because you're, you're advocating a point of view that doesn't use force, uh, that's get, get rid of government, the people have their, have their own say in their lives, which say it's anarcho-capitalism, that's what... That's that's a, a, a position. I'm not personally an anarcho-capitalist, but you know I, I I have a lot of a lot of a, a positions that, that conform with, with that with that uh, point of view. Uh, but once you get to this 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 the state, I mean, with anarcho-capitalism, we believe p capitalism is is a way to is how people naturally function in society. It is just a way of na naturally using resources in the most efficient manner. Well, you're talking about something else that sounds great, but why would people? Uh, uh, just be drawn to this. How, how how would you get them to to, to live at this standard without force? Because couldn't someone come along that that doesn't doesn't agree with your viewpoints and go, you know what? I don't really like everyone being equal. So I'm gonna pay a few guys to, to to join up with me, and we're gonna we're gonna take over. I mean, how how do you prevent that aspect? Some 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 bad person screwing up everything else. 
Well, like I said, we, we haven't gotten there, so it's kind of difficult to see. <laughs> but uh, eventually what it boils down to is, is what people believe. If you have enough people um, who understand and believe that uh, freedom for the individual, true freedom, comes, upon, uh, comes about through mutual aid, you'll have enough people who are ready to resist such people, is, is what you're talking about. Um, but again, uh, because an anarchist society is determined completely by the will of the people, there's just no telling. Um, <laughs> they, could, they could easily vote to not be an anarchist society the next year. And that's the beauty of anarchy, is it's, it is complete freedom. If, if the people want to change their mind, and they want to go back to having a dictator or having someone tell them what to do, they, they're perfectly um, able to do that. We, we see that, like what we were talking about, we, we actually have seen. We've seen that in Iraq, we've seen that in these other countries where that they don't have a tradition of democracy, a tradition of freedom. You know, United States, uh, we're going to bring freedom to the Middle East or some nonsense. We take over the government, we topple it, we, we put it in our own people, and then inevitably, the people on the ground, they start voting to take away their own, their own rights, in, in our opinion, from our perspective. But... By voting to take away their own rights, it's not every individual voting to take away their own rights. So, like, and, and what you're talking about right now is if there's a group of people that, oh, we're going to go back to this, this way of life, what happens if there's uh, 100 people that want to do that and 10 that don't? That's why it's important to have this conversation now. Um, because if, if it does happen that the government topples, what are we going to do? We're just going to go back to what we know. But if we get enough people thinking about it and talking about it, then it becomes a better possibility. I mean, you see a lot of radical candidates running for presidents that just don't get elected, even though people love their ideas because they don't believe they'll actually get into office. They don't believe they'll actually be able to make a difference. Um, Bernie Sanders is a good example. I've heard a lot of people talking about him, saying, I love his ideas, um, I'd love to see it happen, but it's not going to. We, we, we only change in increments. And he just doesn't, you know, even if he were to get elected, he wouldn't have the power to do a lot of the things that he's talking about. And that's part of the problem. That's why I'd like to have this conversation, like to introduce people to anarchy, get them ready, get them talking about it, so that if, if we do move on to a new form of society, we'll be ready for it, more ready for it. The new form of society you want is one where it doesn't involve violence. You don't want to, to coerce people into doing what you want them to do, correct? That's correct. Right. That's one of my fundamental beliefs. You can't, you can't force people to, to, to do something the way you want. Like, I hate top-down measures. I talk about this a lot on Local Liberty, where it's like, here's the edict from on high. We're now going to think this way. We're now going to do it this way. And it's like, wait, I didn't agree to that. I didn't agree to this. We talk about on our show, the social contracts. Like, when you're born, at one, at, at one minute old, you have now signed the social contract. And you now are forced to go along with all the arbitrary rules that are imposed upon by somebody else. And, and, and that bothers me, but, but, my way, but my way of living without out that force seems like it might be different than, than your, your version. Your version sounds like a, maybe like a hippie commune or something. <laughs> Which is great, right? If people, if people want to go move into an area and start, and start their own society like that, that's, that's fantastic. I just worry, is, is it really practical on a large scale? Can, can that continue on without intervention from an outside force screwing it up? It, it's, it, it'd be a great experiment. It, it'd be one I would love to see. Um, as far as how it would protect itself, like you're talking about, um, it, this is a great philosophy, but it lacks teeth. What's, where's the military? How's it going to protect itself from outside influences and violence? Well, well we've always we've seen that throughout history. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm I'm opposed to using violence to change the government. I'm not opposed to using a military to protect yourself, and also not just a military to protect the people, but um, in a truly free society. Look at it this way: um, you could be armed, I could be armed. What's to what's to prevent me from uh, breaking into your house and taking your stuff? Well, everybody's armed. Why why am I going to risk my life for that? Especially if everything is being provided. If I have equal access to the means of production, and I have just as much access to food, clothing, and shelter as everybody else, I'm not going to be driven by those basic needs. Well, that's an interesting concept, uh, Larry. And we just wanted to introduce. I just wanted to introduce this right now, uh, uh, very briefly. We're going to talk about about this fur further on and in other segments because there's a lot because whether it's anarcho-capitalism or anarcho-socialism having a society without government is I think it's just something interesting to talk about what, what, what would happen or, or what has happened in the past and the small pockets without uh, some sort of centralized control or centralized ruler but right now we're nearing the end of this segment Larry but we're we want to have you back on we want to hear more of these ideas uh, maybe you can break down very more specific things that you want to talk about about, about how, how do people pave roads, how do people get food, how do people do all these things that happen now that are provided by government, how would it be provided with, with the absence of government? 
Um, but anyways, Larry, it's, it's been a pleasure to have you on. This has been Larry Rector. Is there any, anything that you're doing going on you want people to know about? Thank you for having me on. Um, not at this time, but when I come back in the future, I am working on a book and I'm starting up a blog. And I would love to plug that the next time I'm on. Okay, next time he's on, he's going to pimp his blog. Anyways, we're going to see you guys later. This has been Local Liberty. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Later, guys.